I think also JFK, if you look it up, there are his medical records online. He was prescribed, I think, 10 to 30 milligrams of halotestin. So he, like, he was taking less than than the president. <laughs> For fun fact. <laughs> What's up, everyone? It's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. What's up, everyone? It's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Back with the king of Macedonia, Alec Matrivsky, my bodybuilding coach at Alec Matrivsky on Instagram. And if you want any sort of consultation, link is in the description below. Alec. I recently made a video discussing James English's contest prep cycle from our good buddy Derek from More Plates, More Dates. He broke down the cycle that was given to him. I wanted to get your thoughts on James English's pro debut, or not pro debut, I can't talk, pro win. He turned pro in one single show. What did you think of James's physique? And more importantly, what did you think about the cycle that was presented on, you know, a YouTube channel, one of the most popular, the most popular YouTube channel in the fitness scene? in my opinion as far as information is concerned what did you think of Derek's you know breakdown of his cycle yeah I saw the video um and I saw James's physique honestly he looked on point uh literally blasting full shredded always can get shred more shredded obviously there is no such thing as being too shredded even in the classic physique but he looked amazing now as far as the cycle goes um Derek basically mentioned bro broke it down perfectly only thing that uh, I just don't didn't really uh, quite understand as far as like trying to attenuate uh, the uh, the side effects such as gyno uh yeah and that, that, my video basically I was just like that's that's ridiculous and it hurt his look I the didn't whole time I, not to mention I didn't I didn't understand the reason for uh, taking 500 mix of tests especially in a cutting setting because uh, testosterone is is basically a, a bioidentical fundamental androgen that people use in general to maintain because it's a substrate for aroma for aromatized uh, we need endogenous estrogen to a certain degree to function for uh, you know neurological function for uh, uh, potentiating you know uh, heart health kidney health and so forth and uh, and and, uh, and and our vascular um, uh, system to lower systemic inflammation and whatnot having super physiological estrogen levels which will inevitably happen if you take 500 mg of testosterone will just right, require right. aromatized inhibition, which I think is, again, very unwarranted because you're using all of these uh, different drugs, especially TREN, which is a progestin. And all of these synthetic progestins, even natural, and even though to a some degree is bioidentical, they have uh, um, synthetic progestins as metabolites in our body, and they can act as ligands to other re receptors, such as estrogen receptor alpha. That's why when you took TREN and you had testosterone, I think, what was it? What dose of tests you were taking when with TREN and you had gyno and you could never attenuate it, you said uh, to me once, uh, and also on the video. Uh, I don't personally remember the dosage. I normally don't go above... 500 ever so you know? so you you have normally pick a more selective androgen instead of just ramping the test up right but but with tests you saw that w when you had a trend even when you you know the guy that was uncontrollable yeah, yeah. exactly so yeah. that's the it, thing yeah. trend doesn't aromatize it doesn't convert to estrogen then why the fuck do people get gyno right even when when they use aromatase inhibitor well that's exactly the same thing also happens with nandrolone and that's because of these synthetic progestins that they can just bind to to other receptors and made a transcription very similar to in this case estrogen uh nandrolone uh, decanoid deca does this the same his assertion dose was unnecessarily high had he used 125 for example which is you know true trt i think he'd be way better off way less need of uh using an aromatase inhibitor, less impact on cholesterol and other biomarkers, and overall a better look. Now, as far as the androgenic stack, I think there was 150 trend, uh, if I recall correctly, and 400 yes, mass. 150 trend. Yes. Right. Now, as far as uh, the mastron really helped, you know, mitigate the estrogenic side effects, because that's what it's for it uh and it's a standard standard prep setup yeah yeah exactly now the trend though i found it funny actually because um i've been i've been 
you know, I've been, I've done everything from getting extremely shredded to extremely bulking, you know, doing the same with clients. There are things, as you can see in the pictures, that are within the look, the cosmetic effect that require, in order to get a certain type of look, you need to be blasting to some degree androgens. By blasting, I mean anything that supra physiological is blasting. There is no appropriate amount because we're all drug abusing, basically. When, 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 when I remember when I was like, like three, four percent body fat, I'm talking shredded glutes, showering with my socks on because I like my fucking bones hurt just walking. I never had, you know, the statuesque granite look, you know, those extreme hot, uh, uh, veiny look, gr graininess that's like very evident in James Physique, for instance. Mm -hmm. And he may be a hyperandrogenic responder and get a certain, you know, that look with lower dosages. But, you know, th as far as I, I also saw his buddy, the Swish guy, has taken higher doses of trend up to upwards of 700. And even then, you know, the, the graininess has, ne you know, hasn't been even close to that. But like people do need to understand that even though these are powerful androgens, there's a certain threshold that is still required in order to get mm -hmm. that level of freakiness when your delts are just bulging 24 7 and you have veins everywhere like spider webs and you have like small bumps in the skin that people associate with gr growth hormone which is bullshit that that's kind of tells me that there's more going on there especially also with the halo testing 10 milligram dose like i'm I, i'm just mm -hmm. wondering like now i'm the whole world world is watching at me i have like what i don't know how many followers like five hundred thousand or whatever I don't know how many followers the, the kid has. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, everybody's watching at me. This is my my shot at taking a pro car, 22 years old. And I'm like, I have this. Honestly, I think I think James just wanted to compete, you know? Oh, yeah. He never competed. Like, he didn't know he was going to go pro. I think it was just awesome that he got number two. He got second place. He got his card. And but it was just a crazy outcome. Do you think he trains to lose, though? Is he like, you have no. to. You have to have in your mind and people like bodies are saying, bro, you look insane. You have people even sucking your dick saying you look like Mr. Olympia. Like all that shit will get to you. There's no way you're like, eh, you know, I, I, I wish I'm top six. Like nobody does that. that. That has that hype behind him. So and then in then put yourself in this situation. You buy a, a bottle from your dealer and you have like 50 tablets of halo test and sitting in front of you and you have in your protocol 10 milligrams every day for what like two weeks right so that's 20 tablets you have 30 left over for for what nothing like you when are you gonna com compete again probably like in months or next year you're like okay i'm gonna take 10 milligrams of this and then leave the rest for no you're just gonna like i would i would be in my mind i would be like fuck if i look this insane with 10 let me see what what i can do with 20 right. and yeah. then 30 and then have uh, the kid sush like just fucking throwing them and me catching them midair, <laughs> just fucking like Pac-Man, just just grabbing them midair and just shaking uh, out my mm -hmm. veins. Like come on, like realistically speaking, I see that playing out that way. And you know when right. when you're when everything like the I whole, just don't buy the 150 trend at all. Neither do you know? do, do I buy the 10 milligrams of Halo. I don't buy that Halo. shit at all. But listen, listen, I've and seen like I get it's on like it's on Derek's channel. You know that's a massive channel. That's a very an important impressionable audience and yeah they obviously want to be transparent with their athletes and Derek wants to present the you know most calculated way and I'm sure that was Derek's suggestions oh yeah I'm sure it was the coach's suggestions yeah yeah I'm just saying if you're trying to get a pro card like you said yeah you're, you're trying to get it because like right getting a pro card and a harm mitigation cycle <laughs> That shit don't go hand in hand, Dude. right? That's like that's like me taking one of my drag racing cars. Like I'm not gonna put race gas in it. No. I'm not trying to like I'm putting fucking ninety, a <laughs> hundred five octane in it before I go race it, right? I'm running the bitch on kill mode. No, not only that, listen, uh, people talk shit about me when I was like they were like, oh, he's on trend when I was doing the SARM you know super shredded just on arms and growth and didn't they, they didn't believe me as well I, I for what like i may be wrong completely and this kid may be you know fucking you know ronnie coleman doesn't matter i'm just going from the physical uh, from the psychological approach to this the reason why right. the reason right. why i didn't blast trend and take steroids when i was that shredded i was scared as fuck about hair loss
else. Like I, I didn't even know that I can get away with certain things up until the, 2019 when I approached it with, you know, low androgenic cycles and, and just build my way up. I had no idea. My, my last experience with exogenous androgens that weren't SARMs were me having clumps of hair falling out. That's how I transitioned into SARMs from steroids initially. So I was scared as fuck. But like I did extra cardio when I was super hungry and losing my mind. I didn't have in 2017 semaglutide, liraglutide, no GLP-1 agonist, no fancy yes. drugs like you back then. Semaglutide has changed the game. So so like I, was, I, w I would just take more ephedrine, more stimulants, like, you know, if I had to, like, I, I would do, like, half a line of coke. Like, I was, I didn't give a fuck. If, mm -hmm. I, if I'm, if i like, three days out of my photo shoot, and this is, like, my, my end, like, the end of my masterpiece, and I've gotten to this place, I would do everything and anything, you know, within my boundaries. And my boundaries were me being scared just of hair loss, nothing else. So there was no, mm -hmm. I would, like... And James was scared of gyno. Yeah, yeah so, his... so, so exactly. So I'm sure he did everything that would not provoke the guy now but like from the other uh, he did examistane and raloxifene on top every day see so uh, but outside of that you're still throwing the kitchen sink approach but overall everything else sounds perfectly fine she killed it so there's nothing really to be <laughs> noted in that regard i just found it kind of interesting His posing was great because because yeah I just found an interesting... Like he outposed the fuck out of everyone if you watch the vlogs. He yeah. just never <laughs> faded. Like, people... I, I read a lot of the comments around James's shit, and they're like, oh, you, you deserve, like, third or fourth when I'm watching the posing, and the third and fourth guy's like... <gasps> Like, if you're judging that and the two dudes can't hold poses and James is like a fucking statue, it's like... What, what, does, what does that tell you, though? That tells you that he had the writing on the wall. Everything was... The lights were on him and he was well aware of that. Do you think that he would, you know, leave anything on the table? That's why he was so professional with the posing, with everything. He's well aware of what's going on. And listen, this is not me trying to s say anybody's a liar or anything like that, even though basically... <laughs> It comes down to that. I think this cycle is white lied for but, our mitigation. But, but I understand. Straight it. up, Russo I, just dropped the bomb. I don't, I don't, I don't like the whole thing about uh, the industry being so harm mitigate oriented because now trt is basically the new 500 mix of tests people yeah. used to lie in regards to that they're on or not they were fake natties now it's like downplaying what they're taking in order to fit in the criteria of oh i'm not promoting irresponsible drug abuse when in reality when that you're prepping equate. when you're competing it's everything on the table everything else comes down to after the competition that's when you go up that's when you test all your biomarkers again that's when you fix your cholesterol when you fix your your EGFR, your lipids, everything, everything, everything. And then you stay healthy for the majority of the year. You're responsible in the off season. You, you don't get to having 200 over uh, 200 over like 95 blood pressure and heart rate <laughs> like uh, 110 resting. Like you don't get yourself to that. And then you've killed it. Then, then you can play around with being unhealthy for six to eight weeks. Then that's fine. And that's still a, a Russian related. That's still getting gambling but odds are, are in your favor when you do it like that right. and i'm sure james and all of these guys are, are will, will do it like that and i'm pretty sure i'm just more i hope i'm I, actually if i'm wrong i do apologize because there's also a chance that, that that's the case but like i just speak my mind obviously because you asked me so overall you know props to the kid looked amazing and that's my two yeah, sons i'm sons taking sons nothing away from him oh yeah and you know he killed it as far as stage presence posing most conditioned up there in my opinion mm -hmm. he got outsized by first big whoop it's his first show yeah as far as the cycle the world famous cycle that he went pro in one show when the dosages get broken down and it's totaled up to 1.2 total grams of gear do you believe that alec no and i it's not that it's not that the size is you know 
it's not obtainable it's not even close to that i'm just gauging off of the sheer look when you're harder than you're shredded that's that tells me that there's more going on and again post up my pictures when i was like three percent body fat you can see every line every line everything perfectly clear but there's no statuesque feel to it there's no blasting full delts and traps and veins on my forehead and yeah and face and looking James 55 looks like a fucking statue you know he uh, the the kid that we once talked about the the d-train guy he also has that look and admittedly he he was like in some pictures he has that look and he, you know he said himself like what like crazy trendosis right so 1200 he publicly claimed right so the same bird and fit mm -hmm. dosage i interviewed that kid a mm -hmm. long time ago as well so, so yeah that there you have it so no it's not the muscle mass that's not obtainable go look at lee priest when he was young when he was competing look at his pictures he was insanely he was even bigger rounder fuller but the graininess it wasn't like that you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. I'll, I'll send you pictures so you can po uh, you know post up and and use it as a reference but again we may r be wrong these are just our opinions yeah, these yeah. are just our opinions so feel free to comment your own opinion down below and maybe we're maybe we're way off but sure. I saw Derek review the cycle. I wanted to give my opinion on the gyno prevention. I think it's very critical that if, you know, James could do that one time. I'm glad he's going to get the surgery. He's going to cruise. He's going to lose his physique for a little bit. And then he's going to bounce back and never have to abuse that amount of aromatase inhibitors for that long ever again. I wanted to point that bullshit out because that should not be used as the anti-gyno protocol <laughs> for everyone competing. That's right insanity that he did raloxifene and exemestane like crazy the whole time and honestly in my opinion that left gains on the table growing into the show and then overall i wanted to get alec on to dissect the the total amount of grams used i didn't really think the trend dosage i think since it's going on derek's channel which is like derek's channel is a gem derek is one of the most politically important figures in all of fitness when it comes to bringing medicine harmony negation and the extremeness that is bodybuilding together yeah so when you have that being presented to the most amount of people yeah in this category niche i don't really you know talk shit on it being mitigated but like you know alex said when it's competing when you're racing a car there's inherent danger mm -hmm. you accept the inherent danger and if we can't have the truth what is the truth i think also jfk if you look it up there are his medical records online he was prescribed i think 10 to 30 milligrams of halotestin so he like he was taking less than than the president <laughs> <laughs> for fun fact that's a, that that's such a crazy fun <laughs> fact to end on i feel like d andrew's gonna put that at the front like just just post james a english of took <laughs> james english took less testosterone halo. than jfk halo halo halo, yeah. halo. never yeah. mind <laughs> oh my god yeah andrew's gonna pull that up that's that's the beginning hook yeah oh my god <laughs> yeah all right guys i'll see you in my next video peace